Hello Puzzle Pals, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel where we talk about puzzles. This video is not going to be a jigsaw puzzle video, but a craft puzzle video, which I know sounds ridiculous and you're like, Jessica, this is just a craft, this is not a puzzle, but hear me out. This company is called Craft for Cause and they make these 3D paper sculpture crafts that you can do. They're also kind of puzzles because I mean, you got to figure out how to put this into this. I could see that being hard. So the way that this works is you go to their site, you buy whichever animal that you want to make into a sculpture. As soon as you like buy it, they email you. I don't know why I put buy in quotes. You're literally buying it. When you buy it, <laughs> they send you an email of the PDF to download. So I feel like once you have it, you can just like do the same thing like a hundred times. Like maybe you love how this rabbit looks and you decide you want to have like a whole field of them. And so there you go. And you just make like 20 paper rabbits. So you get this PDF in your email, you download it and they say all you need to assemble it are just like super basic supplies. So obviously you need a printer because you'll need to print this. You'll need some paper. I suggest using some sort of card stock. Um, I just printed this out on like regular printer paper and I feel like that's what most people would do um, because that's what they have in their house. But I do think this is going to be a project that's going to be a lot harder if you use regular paper as opposed to using cardstock. Aside of the printer and the paper, you will need a cutting mat, an X-Acto knife, scissors, the ruler, and then it also says that you'll need a water-based glue. I think personally that a liquid glue might, might work on thicker paper, but I could see it 100% not working on regular printer paper. So I definitely grabbed a glue stick and liquid glue for this project. So the instructions that they give us are super exciting, basically Ikea instructions where it's just images and you have to like figure it out yourself. Although I should say that I'm kind of a pro at building Ikea furniture. I should be able to figure this out, I think. The next thing is obviously all of your sheets of pieces for your sculpture. Not really a rhyme or reason. Well, there's probably a reason. The reason is probably to like save paper and fit the most on here that you possibly can. I'm the kind of person who doesn't want to cut out all 56 of these at the very beginning because they will be everywhere. They will get lost. They will get ripped. I could just see it being a very big hot mess. In theory, I would like cut out the first five, work on those, cut out the next five, work on those. These are not set up like that. Like you'd have to go on a scavenger hunt to find them because you know, although this sheet is 24, 25, 26, 27, which makes sense. It also has 51, 52 and 48. And they're all like that. And I, it's clearly just because they wanted to fit the most amount of them on a piece of paper, which is fine. It's just kind of frustrating for me and my way of doing things. So because I do think that this will work better with a thicker paper, I am doing a thick paper as well. I'm using um, a cardstock because I didn't have a printer at home that I could print this on. My printer has no ink. My mother-in-law printed it for me. She just printed it on regular paper. I just went ahead and painted some cardstock. That was like super basic. I just, you know, pulled out some cardstock, some um, paint and brushes and water. Just put random strokes of color all over these papers. It's not like a specific order. I kind of just like had this mental idea of this bunny being finished and having like a watercolor style texture to it or coloring to it. I don't know. I just think that might be cool. Also, these are not like your regular size paper. These are like 11 by 14, so they're massive. So the idea is to take a piece of the stencil, lay it on top of the paper and cut them both up at the same time. The only thing that you have to make sure of if you do that is there's clearly only paint on one side of the paper. Um, so if you lay this on top of here and then cut it out, this is gonna be not seen. It's gonna be on the inside. So you have to make sure you do it the reverse way so that you cut it out on the white side so that you can see the color when you're actually assembling it. All right, so let's get started. been 50 minutes, five zero, and I've literally cut out 
five of the pieces. Only 51 to go. What I should have done was cut out all the cardstock first and then painted it after it was all assembled. But like, what if it didn't work? All my hard work was ruined. Anyways, here we are. So there aren't really any instructions, but um, there's numbers like this as a two and this is a two. So as far as I understand, you glue the two to the two. Same here, the four goes to the four and the one goes to the one, the seven to the seven. Basically, you just match up all the numbers. So this is definitely gonna be critical um, since this doesn't have any of the numbers on it. So this is the first year. I can definitely see that the more you do this, the better you get at it. It's we're on year number two. Let me tell you, I'm just as slow at cutting as I was the first year, but gluing, this is definitely a skill that needs to be honed. tired because holding the exact knife and pressing hard but not cutting use this some hand muscles that I clearly don't have Oh gosh folks okay so I'm this far and part of me is like just stop here mainly because I've just realized that at some point I made a mistake and put one of the pieces in upside down edge I need to glue the next piece to is okay, let me see if I can show you guys this I have a try of that today okay so here there's that point this is the piece that I need to attach um the next piece to except i need to attach it to this end of the piece so obviously i put this piece in upside down okay so i took this entire piece out because i thought the whole thing was wrong but in fact three of the glues were right only two of them were wrong so now i have to put it back in i think today is the last day 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 five i have seven pieces left do you want to see it can you see it is it in frame i don't know i'm so proud clearly it needs a tummy and some back paws and the rest of its tail the goal is to finish her by today this afternoon and i will talk to you guys then talk about this for a second and how excited I am okay so it definitely took five entire days okay not entire days two hours three hours a day it's like a 15 to 20 hour project I was definitely wondering how they were gonna do the bottom but they just cut holes in the bottom of the feet like why didn't I think of that I don't know I'm really I'm so proud of it there's definitely holes in it you know didn't cut the line straight or I didn't fold it exactly on the right fold so it definitely left gaps in certain places which is less than ideal however i think i did a pretty good job all things considered so if you did want to try one of these out the company is called craft for a cause they donate a portion of all their proceeds to helping kids in underdeveloped countries they've also been nice enough to give my followers a discount code so if you use the code puzzle in progress 40 you'll get 40 percent off your order okay, so what do i think about this it's hard i mean i'm 29 and i have a degree in art i mean not sculpture and i also took a paper folding class in university this is definitely not a project that i would do as a kid or that i would buy for i would say anyone younger than 15 to be completely honest 14 maybe you have to be very precise 
and I know I'm not like that. After I had each piece cut out, like you have to go in and score each line. I did like the first five with a ruler and then I was like, yeah, this is gonna take too long. And then I just scored them all by hand. I definitely had some wobbly lines and I'm sure that contributed to the holes that I mentioned having. So I actually just went in and covered up those holes with little pieces of um, paper that matched the bunny. Second thing that I would say is that you have to print it on the paper you want to use. Even if you print it on white paper, paint it afterwards. Don't print it on just like regular printer paper. You need something firm and heavy to hold its shape. I would say though, that if you're a parent trying to keep your kid indoors and they're either really good at math or art, I would definitely say get them one because I mean, it's gonna keep them inside. Also, it does say to use a water-based glue. I was thankful that I did that because I did make a mistake and I had to peel some off. And I think that if I had, actually use my glue gun like I wanted to, I would have just been screwed. So definitely go with the water, or water uh, based glue, but be aware that a lot of this project is just you like holding things until they dry. So I hope that you guys give this craft a try or at least go and check out what they are because they're pretty freaking cool. I will talk to you guys later. Who also needs a name? Oh, maybe Mr. Bon Bon.